Hello guys, thank you very much for joining in. Today I'm going to be talking about how exactly to calculate VAR because this concept of VAR is also there in your uh, FRM curriculum level 1 and in that the first chapter which is building blocks of risk management you have that uh, basic introduction of VAR. So I'll, I'll first explain you what exactly is VAR and then I'll take you towards the Excel part to show you how historical VAR is actually calculated. Okay, so let me first take you towards this concept which is VAR, the first paragraph. It tells you that that VAR is nothing but it tells you what is the probability of you getting impacted by the worst case loss. Okay, now generally VAR is calculated using 95%, 99% or 90% confidence level. Okay, when I'm taking a 95% confidence level, that means the remaining part which is the alpha, okay, that is a 5% component. If I take 90% confidence level, then the remaining part 10% is my alpha. Okay. Now when a financial institution is saying they have calculated the VAR and they're saying that I have a one day VAR, I'm highlighting that component. I have a one day VAR of $2.5 million at 95% confidence level. Okay. That means that on any given day, because it's a one day VAR on any given day, the loss amount of being greater than 2.5 million dollar there is only 5% chance of happening that okay so what I have done is as a financial institution I have realized I've calculated that there is only 5% chance of me facing a loss above 2.5 million dollar and 95% chance that I'll face a loss of 2.5 million dollar or less than that okay that is what is being covered over here if you read this line Okay, if you read this one line, it tells you that there is 5% chance that I will face loss, okay, on any given day greater than $2.5 million, okay. Now, there are three important components in this line which, which I stated. The first component is one day VAR, okay. Now, why, why are we calculating one day VAR? Because we are primarily looking at one day data from the underlying asset. That means daily returns data. Okay, you can calculate one week VAR, you can calculate one year VAR. If suppose you're calculating one year VAR, then you will say on any given year, the, the same way you are talking about one day, on any given day. Okay, the next is this amount, 2.5 million. This is the amount which is calculated. I'll be showing you in this, in this video how exactly to come up with this number. Okay, ne the third important component is this 95% VAR. What does it mean? Okay, I have I, I as a bank, I have taken this confidence level based on my comfort level. In many cases, the regulatory ref, uh, regulatory requirement is to have a 99% VAR. Okay, now in this example, we have taken 95%. You can take 90%, you can take 99% also, you can take 97% also. Any confidence level. Okay, so there were three important component when this when we, when we made a statement about VAR. The first component was a time horizon that is one day. The second component was the dollar amount, the VAR dollar amount which we have calculated. The third component is the confidence level. Okay, so I can have a different statement also. My one week VAR is $100 at 97% confidence level. That means on any given week, there is a chance of 3% that I will face a loss greater than $100. Okay, so that is what the logic is. Now this calculation is primarily being done, okay, when we are assuming that the underlying asset is liquid. Okay, that means the calculation of the price of that underlying asset is easily available and it is easily possible for you to liquidate that position and move out. That is a very, very strong assumption because if you have, if you have invested into real estate, if you have invested into certain commodities which are illiquid then you cannot explicitly say this statement that the asset is liquid okay now there are also a certain assumptions that they we are taking var calculation for normal scenario because in a non-normal scenario that means in a stress scenario the var calculation can be incorrect because in a non-normal scenario the correlation between the assets increase your riskiness in the market increase then you need a more robust method Okay, so that was the first paragraph 
which we have talked about in the book okay and this gives you an introduction to all the frm level 1 candidate in the first chapter what exactly is var the continuation part of this chapter this concept is basically in your book for valuation and risk model in that you have first three chapters which explicitly talks about var okay now they have also given you an example of var calculation now they have taken 1000 monthly returns okay to calculate the var percentage and then the dollar amount i am going to take the similar thing but i am going to take a daily daily calculation so i what i have done is i have taken an asset okay let me assume that the value of my asset is basically 1000 dollars okay is basically 1000 dollars now i have done this assumption so that i can come to the var number in dollar amount okay i have what i have done is i have taken the historical price the closing price the daily closing price of my asset okay now if i show you how much data i have it is basically i have taken 374 days data you can take 500 days data you can take 700 days that that doesn't make much of a difference okay but the i am trying to explain you the calculation purpose okay now first i have taken the asset price the next thing i'll do is i'll calculate the return the holding period return for daily asset price that means i will take log natural so in the excel you directly have the function now when i'm taking log natural i'll be getting the continuous return so when i'm doing this return i'll take the latest price so the latest price for my first calculation is 42.93 i'll divide it by the old price one day old price that is 41.81% so i am getting a return of around 2.2.66 i am getting a return of 2.66 okay now this percentage return is primarily being done or this return is basically my one day holding period return similarly i can go and calculate the other part also for the next day that means the latest price is 43 i will divide it by the one day old price which is 42.93 and i will get the return in a similar fashion now what i am doing is i am just taking the return and i am just incorporating it for the entire data set okay now over here i have received the returns daily returns of that asset the next step would be to take those returns in the entire format okay and do a sorting okay so what i'll do is i'll take the entire data set and i will calculate okay i will take the returns and i will put it in the new slide in new uh, column and what i'll do is i will take the values only because i don't want to incorporate formulas and i want to sort it out now when i'm going to sort it out okay there is an option in your excel where you can uh do the sorting for the current data set okay if i look at the current sorting the lowest return lowest daily return is negative 19.38% what i'll do is i'll just do the ranking of those return so i have taken one i have taken two i have taken three and similarly i have taken the entire returns calculation so i've got 373 returns 373 returns okay now i am take going to take i am going to calculate the var but i am going to take certain assumptions now so the first assumption is i am going to i am calculating var for 95% okay you can take 99% also there is no problem so i have taken 95% as a confidence level if 95% is a confidence level what is the alpha that i have that is 1 minus 95% that is 5% okay what is the total number of returns that i have okay in a simple language what i'll be doing is i'll be taking the count of all the returns that i have okay so i am getting 373 returns okay now when i am taking historical var what i am actually doing is i want to identify what is the return that is coming at the lowest 5% because my alpha is 5% so what i will do is i will take the 5% of 373 now when i take the 5% of 373 the answer i am getting is not rounded up it is coming as 18.65 what i'll be doing is i'll be rounding it up okay the reason i'm rounding it up and not rounding it down because i want to be more conservative 
okay that is fine you could eat the either way is okay and also one more reason is that the answer that I'm getting is 18.65 it is about 18.5 so I'm rounding it up if the answer would have been 18.3 I could have I could have taken the 18th number okay so I'll just take the round up and the number which okay I'll just uh, summarize it to one digit okay, one second ah my bad 18 point okay zero my bad yeah so it is 19th number that means I can start from the ranking side and I can keep going down to the 19th value this becomes my var percentage this becomes my var percentage now if I want to calculate the dollar amount I will have to take the value of the asset and if I want to calculate the dollar amount I will simply take thousand dollars into the 19th value the 19th lowest value the four negative 4.125 percent and this will give me my dollar amount for war okay so this will give me the dollar amount for war now similar calculation has already been done in your book they've also shown you a graph if you want to see the graph what I what you should be doing is you should be taking all the returns data okay and go to insert function and you will find an option as a recommended chart okay so you can take this data okay I'll just quickly move ahead move to the top and I will incorporate the recommended chart over here so I have to take I can take this data point and there you will be able to find the distribution of the entire returns okay and the lowest return should be somewhere on the negative 4 or negative 5 percent side which was my lowest 5 percent data and this is how you calculate var okay now if I take you back to the book okay this is the entire calculation that is being done in your book and they have taken thousand monthly re returns we have taken daily returns okay and they have created a histogram of all the returns this similar histogram is what I have also shown you okay now they what they did is they have taken the lowest 5% because they were calculating 5% var and they took the lowest 5% return in their case the lowest 5% return is coming as negative 15.5% in our case it was negative 4.127 as per my historical data okay the value of the portfolio over here is one million dollar in my case it was thousand dollar when you multiply the var percentage into the dollar amount you will get the dollar value of the var this is how they calculated this one lakh fifty five thousand dollar in their value okay so i hope this part becomes very clear to you and the calculation is very simple